All right, so you can go in the notes. There's all sorts of tables and stuff that I created. Um, basically, this is our approach. We go with, we, we have these um, phasers for our voltages and currents where we basically go and use the RMS values now. How do I relate the RMS value to a cosine wave? What's the relationship between a cosine and the RMS value? A peak over root two. Right. Um, that's important. That's the kind of thing that I will give you on a test to screw you up. All right. Is I'll give it to you in peaks and everything and ask for values in RMS. All right. So that's important. We always use RMS values. So we talked about this instantaneous power. We don't really use it much. We define some things that came from it, the P and the Q. All right. So if you haven't thought about this in a week, um, basically what we said is when we look at our load, if I have an inductive load, the angle of the impedance is always positive. Right. What's that mean about the current and the voltage? How do I figure out the relationship between the current and the voltage? Uh, current will be lagging if I have an inductive load. How do I figure that out? Yeah, v, well, V equals I times Z, just Ohm's law, right? So what's the angle relationship that comes from that? Angle V, what do I do? Angle V plus angle I plus angle Z, like that, okay? That relationship tells me everything. So if, if I say, what's the angle of the current? The angle of the current is the angle of the voltage minus the angle of the impedance. So if the impedance has a positive angle, the current is behind the voltage because I have to subtract from the angle of the voltage all right, to get the angle of the current. We call that lagging, okay? Now, if I have a capacitive load, I'm over here in the fourth quadrant. It means I got a negative angle so that my current will be leading, right? It would have a voltage, the, the angle of the current would be in front of, more positive than the angle of the voltage. All right, so we're gonna do some more examples of that. And we talked about, just kind of a summary of all those things. So we say, if it's an inductive load, I lags V, if it's a capacitive load, I leads V, all right? And we have all that stuff there to deal with, okay? And then we have all these relationships which we can go back to as needed, okay? So here's the problem we're gonna try to deal with. I've got these two loads, um, load A and load B that are connected across the transformer like that. Um, and I wanna figure out a number of different things. Basically, I wanna figure out uh, what's the current, I figure out the power triangle, in both of the two loads, load A and load B, I want to figure out the currents I1 and I2. All right. Uh, so I want to figure out all that stuff. And then I want to figure out um, how I would go through and do the power factor correction to get to unity power factor. Okay. Let's say unity power factor. What, what does that mean again? Power factor of one. Right. Um, so we're going to try to try to solve that problem. Okay, so let's start with the um, let's start with the the loads here. So uh, load A and load B. Let's get the power triangles for those. So we're told that load A has ten kilowatts at a 0.8 power factor leading. Load B has two k bars at a 0.9 power factor lagging. All right. So first thing we have a little bit of vocabulary that we got to deal with there. Let's deal with, I'm gonna do with load B first because it's where I really have to start because it's on the secondary side, right? Um, how do I deal with that? What have I been told? <laughs> what have I been told about load B? Two K VARs, 0.9 lagging. Which quantity have I been told? Q, yeah, I've been told the Q, right? So I've been told that QB, I'll call it that, QB is equal to, now is it negative or positive? 0.95 lagging, is that negative or positive? So what, what type of load, let's identify that. If I've got a lagging power factor, what is that? This guy is inductive. 
And whenever we talk about the complex power, the complex power vector is P plus JQ, right? That is always, we can write that as the magnitude of S. And what's the angle of that vector? P plus JQ. If I drew that vector, what would be the angle of that vector? Not, not a number, just but just in general, what's the angle of that vector? The angle of the complex power vector is given by what? The angle of the impedance. The the impedance. Okay. So you guys told me I've got an inductive load. I've got an inductive load. What's its impedance always? You don't know, you can go back through these through these tables and whatnot that I have here, right? That's all kind of summarized for you. If I have an inductive load, what's true about the angle of its impedance? Positive. Positive, okay. So I know the Q sub B here is apparently two K bars, not, it's not negative, all right? It's positive, okay. All right, so I wanna figure out what is the whole triangle for that guy. So, if I'm looking at specifically for load B, I know that I, I am apparently pointing up 2000 here for my Q, right? There's P, here's Q. Okay, now, how do I figure out what the full vector is? The angle. I can get the angle, all right? So how do I, how do I get the angle? There's no sign of the vector. Yeah, phi z is equal to, and I'm going to call this uh, phi z b, I guess, because it's load b, right? That would be cosine inverse of 0 0.95, okay? Now, that works out to be, uh, what did I get? 18.1949 degrees. Clearly a nine. Okay. All right. So how would, let's figure out P next. All right. Next thing I want to figure out is P. So don't think about this too hard. This is a trigonometric problem here, right? So we know apparently that the angle here, we know that this is phi Z B. That's what that angle is. From that, I can figure out the length of this side, P. And this is just a trig problem, isn't it? How can I use trigonometry to figure out what P is? I'll call it P sub B. How can I use trigonometry? Tangent. Ta First of all, what's the tangent of an angle by definition, trigonometrically? Opposite over, Opposite over adjacent, right? So in other words, in this case, I would say it's Q over P. Right, opposite is Q because we're talking about the angle phi z, right? So Q over P would be equal to the tangent of phi z b, like that, right? And so I could use that to solve for P, couldn't I? Right, and and that would be a way to to do this. All right. The other thing I I could have done is I could have said I could have figured out what's the length of F, right? In other words, what's the apparent power? What's the, what's the apparent power? Yeah. Is what? Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you for saying that. You're not right, but, but thank you for being brave enough to say it, yeah. right? So the complex power, this is, this is really always tricky for people. The complex power is V times I conjugate. This, that's what this thing is here. This thing here, this would be, in terms of the way I, I did this, this would be V2 times I2 conjugate, okay? The complex power is not the apparent power. What's the apparent power? It's the magnitude of S, all right? So it's the length of this side of the triangle, right? So this would be whatever SB magnitude is. That's the length of that side. That's the apparent power, okay? If I had said to solve for that directly, what would I have done? I would have used sine, all right? You should see that that would be the way to do it. It's just a trick problem, right? So if I, if I go through and I solve for this, what I end up getting for P, P sub B, 
I get 30.424. What's the units? K what? Kilo what? Kilowatts. Kilowatts is power. Okay. So I get the that the whole vector SB would be equal to 30.424 kW plus J times 2,000. What units? 2,000 bars. Okay. Now, if I want to get the apparent power, what would that be? How would I get that from here? Apparent power is what for the complex? It's the length, right? So I would just take the magnitude of that. So that would be the Pythagorean theorem, right? So the magnitude of that whole thing would end up being, if I did the math, 32.026. And what units do I use? Oh, I have units. Full amps. So power factor has no units. Complex power is tricky because complex power is a vector. All right. Um, so yeah, that's, so the real part has units of watts. The imaginary part has units of bars. The length of that thing, the magnitude of that vector has units of volts. I didn't choose the definitions of those things. They're just that's just what we use. Right. And it's it's really to, to express that this this term here is related to ultimately a direct energy conversion. This is just related, this somehow tells me something about the current that's flowing in the network that is related to just charging up the inductance of that load. Right. Um, and so we had to come up with some some terminology for it. But the but the vector itself, there's no particular units you would associate. The real part has units, the imaginary part has units, the magnitude of it is said to have units. All of them really are volts times amps at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. Do you have a question? You only have um, a negative cosine when you're in the fourth cosine, right? Right. And so if I look at the second load here, load A, I was told I had 10 kilowatts and 0.8 leading. All right. So what do I have for that? If I have 10 kilowatts and 0.8 leading, what do I have? I have a capacitive load. That's going to be in the fourth quadrant. All right. So that tells me. And for this guy, what have I been told? Which one of those terms? P, Q, or the magnitude of S? I've been told P. All right. So I've been told that this guy, I have 10 kW. This is P sub A equal to 10,000. And I would say that the angle here, phi Z A, what is that? How do I figure it out for load A? So negative inverse cosine of 0 0.8. Now, this is where you have to think about it, right? I suppose I have to, I can't just say I know that the that it's inverse cosine of the power factor. I put the negative in there because it's leading. If it was lagging, then I would have made it positive. If I'm just leading, then I have to throw the negative in myself to mean that the angle is pointing into the fourth quadrant. All right. Because we have to think about it because the cosine, right, of an angle in the first or fourth quadrant is always going to be positive. All right. So we have to put the thinking into whether it's going to be negative or positive angle. So in this case, if I do that, I end up with this being what? Um, negative. 36.8699 degrees. Okay. All right. That's a pretty big, that's a pretty low power factor. 0.8 is pretty low, all right, in general. In, in reality, if you ever had to deal with that, it'd be pretty low power factor. All right. Um, we usually like to see them closer to one. Okay. So, all right, so what do I what do I want to figure out next? I want to figure out the whole triangle, okay? So I know it's pointing negative. How would I figure out one of the other sides here? How would I get to one of the other sides?
Let's say I wanted to figure out the apparent power. All right, so the relationship he's using is saying, okay, we know it's going to point this way. And it's 36, so it's sort of a bigger angle like that. All right, so this is 36.8699 degrees here. If I want to figure out the magnitude of this, that's the length of that side. Again, I use trig. And I say what to figure that out. So the cosine of negative 36.8699 degrees is equal to, well, it's 0 0.8 apparently, because we were told the power factor. That's got to be equal to what? Adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? Okay, so I have, um, yeah, it's adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I can solve basically there and I get the magnitude of S sub A works out to be, I, did I not actually, I did, didn't I? I didn't actually solve it that way. The magnitude of that, what I did was I actually went and found Q right? Um, that should work. How would I have found Q if I had uh, P and phi Z A like that? Tangent, right? I, say, I would say the tangent of phi Z A is equal to, what's tangent always? What over what? Opposite over adjacent, right? So I have, what's the opposite? Which quantity is the opposite to this? Is it P or Q? Q, right? So I have QB over P sub B, right? If I did that, I would end up with Q sub B equal to negative 7.5 times 10 to the third, right? That, okay. So that tells me my whole vector S sub A is equal to 10,000 minus 7.5 J K what? It's 10 to the third, so it's kilo vars. All right, volt amps reactive. All right, the Q is the reactive term. The way to remember it is it's vars. The R is there. The R means reactive. And the imaginary term is the reactive power. Okay. Okay. So now we've got the, the whole thing. So I want to figure out some currents in this case. All right. So... Let's start by figuring out, first of all, let's look at the transformer there. We're told we got a 10 to 1 transformer, okay? We got a 10 to 1 transformer. I was told it was 480 volts. I guess it wasn't clear, um, but, but I'm saying this is 480 volts with an angle of zero degrees to keep it easy, okay? All right, so I want to figure out um, where's the current here? In this case, really, the current needs to be flowing into the plus terminal, all right? I'm, I'm dealing with a load. All right, so I know the current's flowing in there for that plus terminal. So how do I figure out I2? Uh, voltage relationship, what do you mean? Uh, well, for, for load B there, I don't need to know anything about the turns ratio. I, I've been told that I got 480 volts across it. I know what the complex power is. If I know the complex power and I know the voltage, how can I figure out the current? Yeah. Yep. So S here, SB, the complex power in that, in that load B is equal to V2. And I'm calling it V2. Basically, I guess I'm calling this V2. The voltage V2 is the voltage on the secondary side of the transformer. V2 times I2 conjugate. Okay. And again, how many equations is that? Looks like one, but it's a vector equation. So it's really how many equations? It's really two, right? So which is to say, if I do it for the angles, right? The angle part and the magnitude part, what's the magnitude part? The magnitude of S B is equal to what? Mm -hmm. 
writing that out magnitude wise, the magnitude of S has to be equal to what times what? Magnitude of V2 times the magnitude of I2. Right, because the conjugate doesn't do anything in the magnitudes, right? The other relationship would be for the angles, right? So the angle of SB, the angle of S is always the same as the angle of what? The angle of the impedance, right? That's got to be equal to the angle of voltage. And then what about, do I add the angle of the current? Subtract it. And the reason I subtract it is because of the conjugate operation. Okay. So if I'm going to solve here, so I know the angle of ZB, we knew what that was. We said that that was, what, 18 point one nine four nine degrees we did that two slides ago and then angle of v is zero degrees minus phi i2 now without it, you're going to do the math on that but what's that number phi is going to be a negative angle right so if you think about it if i draw my vectors here v2 is here i2 is basically over here. This is why we say it's lagging, right? Because it's behind this. A positive impedance meant sure that, that this current is behind that voltage. Being further clockwise is a more negative angle, so it's lagging it, all right? If, if we get more into phaser analysis, what we think of is these are really steady states, but in reality, they kind of rotate around over time. So in other words, one is ahead of the other. If I looked at this in the time domain, what this would mean is that this guy, he's, he's a cosine that peaks at zero at time t equal to zero. This guy would be peaking at some time a little bit later. That's, that's what it means for it to be lagging sometimes. All right. Okay. All right. So that's how I would figure that out. So, so the angle here for, for phi i2 would simply be negative 18.1949 degrees. He's behind the voltage by whatever the angle of the impedance is, okay? And then if I do the magnitude relationship, um, what do I end up with? I end up with the, the magnitude of I2 is equal to 66.7201 amps, okay? All right, now. Uh, I can do a similar thing for load A, right? Which I probably should do next. Let's do that next. For load A, what would I do for load A? Wouldn't I do the same approach? Right? Should I do the same approach? So... Basically, for load A, I basically say that I have S sub A. We already figured out what that is for that load. That has to be equal to what? V, whatever the voltage across it is, times whatever the con current through it is conjugate. Okay? What's the voltage across that guy? S sub A. If load A is over there on the primary side. What's the voltage across it? V1. V1, which is the voltage on the primary side of the transform. And I called the current through there I sub A. So I'd say I sub A conjugate. So turns out I need to know something about the transformer to be able to do anything about this. Okay, so we have this kind of drawn out process that I gave you for approaching a transformer, but I want to do this intuitively here. I see I've got the dots. So the dot on the primary side is the top, the dot on the secondary side is at the bottom. Okay. I have defined the voltages so both the plus signs are at the dot. Okay, so a 10 to 1 transformer like this. Which side has more voltage over? The side with more turns always has more voltage, right? Side with more turns, our, relation, our basic relationship is always magnitude of V1 over N1 equals magnitude of V2 over N2. And in this case, What's N1 and what's N2? 10 to 1. So basically I have that the magnitude of V1 
is equal to 10 times the magnitude of V2. Okay. And so in this case, that tells me the magnitude of V1 is 4,800 volts. Okay. What about the phase angle here? What would the phase do? Be the same. All right. So it'd be 4,800 with an angle of zero degrees. Right. If I had if I had drawn the plus and minus the opposite way, there'd be a 180 degree shift. All right. But because because there would be a negative sign in this in, in the vector relationship here. Okay. That we said that was our first step in figuring those problems out. Okay. So then what I know here is that S sub A, which we did before, right, would be 4,800 times I A conjugate, like that, all right? So again, that's two equations and two unknowns, isn't it? So I have S A equals 4,800 times I A conjugate. What's the first equation? For the magnitudes? Yep. Magnitude of SA is 4,800 times the magnitude of IA. All right. If I solve that, plug it in the numbers that we had previously for S sub A, we would see that the magnitude of I sub A is 2.6042 amps. Okay. Heck of a lot smaller than I have for IB, by the way. All right. Notice um, for this, the load on the other side, it's 66 amps. Okay. This guy's a lot smaller. What's the angle going to be? Yeah. So in this case, it works out to be pretty simple because the angle of the voltage is zero degrees. So what we this this relationship here, we would say is phi sub z a, that's the angle of s a, the angle of s is always equal to the angle of the impedance. So, so the angle of the impedance is phi z a, that's equal to the angle of the voltage, which is zero degrees, minus the angle of the current. So the angle of the current is going to be what the opposite of the angle of the impedance. Now going back and looking at the number, I want you guys to tell me is that number going to be positive or negative? Positive. Why positive? It's leading. All right? It's leading. And it does. If you go back, we found out that phi ZA was, I think, negative 36 something degrees. Um, so this works out to be um, 36.8699 degrees. So it tells me that if I were to draw the phasor relationship there, I would see the voltage would be this way. This would be V1. And then I, A would be somewhere over here, like that. Their magnitudes are drastically different, right? One of them is 4,800 volts and the other one's 2.6 amps. All right, so it's kind of hard to draw them to scale. I need logarithms. Logarithms would help me with that if I wanted to. All right. All right, questions about up to there. Okay, what if I wanted to figure out what this current is coming out of the source, I sub S? How would I figure out that? What's that? KCL, yeah, I do KCL, right? So that means I need to figure out what I want is, right? How do I figure out I want? Yeah, I use the power relationship from the transformer here. Um, and I know that I2 is going this way, All right? So the way that I told you guys to do this is I say, I look at this from the perspective of um, I have V1, I1, that's the power going in, plus, let's see, so the way, the way this is drawn is I2 is going um, into the plus sign on the other side, right? So I say minus V2, I2 equal to zero like that, All right? Because I've, I've drawn it going in on one side and out on the other. 
All right. That's that, that that's why I have a negative here. So what I'm going to end up with is that I1, if I plug in the transformer relationship that we already figured out for the voltages, I would have I1 is equal to I2 divided by 10. Right? So in other words, I1 is going to be smaller, right? Intuitively, I already kind of knew that because I knew that the voltage on the primary was bigger. The side with more voltage always has to have less current, right? So that actually is a good thing because I said that the magnitude of the current on the secondary side was like 66 amps. But when I reflect it over, it's going to be about 6 amps, right? So now they're more, a little bit more comparable. All right, so when I, when I do that math, what I end up with is that I1 works out to be 6.672 amps with an angle of negative 18.1949 degrees. So does that mean that the total current, do I just add, so I1 plus I2 would be IF, right? Um, sorry, I called this IA. So if I look at this node right here, I do a KCL right here, right? I would say that I sub S is equal to I sub A. That's the current in load A. That's this current right here, right? Plus I1. That's just KCL at this node right up here. So do I find that by saying 2.6 plus 6.672? Is that how we get the magnitude of that? How do I add vectors? Do I just add these two numbers? Uh, I have to get I have to get them into real and imaginary, right? If I'm going to add two vectors, you add the real parts, you add the imaginary parts. All right. I think we got to the point where we rely too much on MATLAB and we're, we, get, we get the basics of blocking and dackling on this stuff, right? If I want to multiply complex numbers, what format do I want to If I'm going to multiply complex numbers, I want them in what format? Polar or exponential, right? If I want to add complex numbers, what format do I want them in? Rectangular. So I can't, it's not true that the magnitude plus the magnitude is the magnitude. It doesn't work. Right, real part plus real part is real part. Imaginary part plus imaginary part is imaginary part. And then I take the magnitude of that result. That is not the same thing as saying magnitude plus magnitude equals magnitude. All right. So, and we get you guys get lost in this, but it's important. It's kind of thing that'll trip you up. And when you're sitting there with a calculator or a MATLAB or whatever, you get lost in that. You just do the those things and you don't think about it. All right. So that if I do that math. That works out to be very close to what would happen if I added those two magnitudes, but not exactly the same. What I get is 8.4378 8 with an angle of negative 3.5389 degrees. Okay. All right. You guys with me on everything up till here? All these problems follow a pretty general form, and you probably are, are seeing that. The problems are pretty repetitive, really. Um, let's say I want to get to unity power factor. Okay, I would like my loads to be a, at unity power factor, meaning I would want the combination of those loads to be at unity power factor. What would that mean? What would I have to do for I sub S? If I wanted the combination of my loads to be at unity power factor, what would I have to do for I sub S? Okay. Let's go back to well, just a simple problem, right? So let's let's say I had, I don't know, just a simple load. I know the voltage across it, and I know the current going into it. So it's V, I, and let's say this guy is, I don't know, Let's say it's 10 plus J. I don't know. I don't want to do it that way. Let's say it's um, 10 angle, 30 degrees. If I wanted to get to unity power factor for that load, what would it mean for it to be unity power factor? First of all, is that load at unity power factor as 10 angle, 30 degrees? No. 
at unity power factor. What's the unit? So unity power factor. What's that telling me about the angle? Zero. Zero is the angle, right? Now, how do I know that? Unity power factor. What is what is power factor? Power factor is what? Cosine of the impedance angle, which, if we remember, this is ten angle phi z. That's the angle of that load, right? So this. If I wanted to get to unity power factor, a power factor of one, what number has a power factor of one? Or what, what angle is a cosine of one? Only zero, right? Okay, so I want to get that to zero degrees, okay? So um, what, what that tells me is that what's true about the voltage and the current here? They're in phase with each other, right? They're in phase with each other. Okay, so I want to get phi sub z to zero degrees, which in this particular problem here, because the voltage across the loads is zero degrees, that would mean that the current going into the combination of those loads would have to have an angle of zero degrees so that they were in phase with each other. Okay, so if I gave you this problem and I gave you a couple of those on the homework, how do I approach this? If I told you it was 10 angle 30 degrees, what would I have to do to get the unity power factor? Well, what we said is I put a capacitor in parallel with this. So the total S now is whatever this is minus the Q of the capacitor, right? Once I put those in there, so this, so the load has this S, but the S total now is equal to 10 angle 30 degrees minus J times the Q of that capacitor. I gotta be clear about that because I'm adding purely imaginary or reactive power, all right? And so what would that Q of the capacitor need to be? What would this value need to be? Get the unity power factor. This, this gets into the, so what does it mean? Unity power factor means how much Q do I have? Zero. Because if I think about the triangle, right? To have zero degrees, I have to have all P, right? So all, all of the imaginary part needs to be gone, okay? So back to this problem. How would I figure that out here? How would I figure the, this out here? Well, I'd have to look at the combination of the two loads, right? Look at the combination of the two loads. So what... How much power, complex power, is drawn by the combination of the two loads? How would I figure that out? How much complex power is drawn? If I ask you how much power, of it, let's say I had two resistors in series, and I said, what's the power drawn by those resistors? What would it be? It's the power drawn by one resistor plus the power drawn by the other resistor. If I have a bunch of loads and I want to add how much power do they all use, I just add those up. Okay. So if I want to figure out the total amount of power delivered to the loads, what would I do? I would just add them, right? I would say the total power delivered to the loads, S total, let's say, is equal to SA plus SB, right? Whatever that is, right? If I do that math in this particular case, that works out to be 40.2 for 40.424, sorry, 40.424 AW plus J times 2.5 K, what units? KVA, KVAR, okay? How much Q would need, so I need to place a capacitor basically in parallel with let's say load A. How much, how big does that capacitor need to be? How would I size that capacitor? I gotta figure out how much Q I need. How much Q does the capacitor need to source? The capacitor would need to give me, in terms of its magnitude, right? Would need to give me 2.5 kVar. kVar. Like that. Now, the thing that we did at, at, on last Friday was we said, okay, well, how do I relate that to the size of a capacitor? 
what we did is I went back into all of the myriad of formulae here. Right, one of these, this is sort of the summary of all of it. We had this set of relationships. We said, you know, you, you learned in, in circuits one, power is V times I, it's I squared R, and it's V squared over R. All those same things apply, right? So if I look at the reactive power, it's V I times what this sign relationship. We, we have this power factor sort of thing that factors is. But I also have this I squared times the imaginary part of Z. If you look at it, that's basically I squared times an impedance, right? Or V squared over an impedance. So which one of those would I use to figure out the size of the capacitor? Yeah, because I know the voltage across the load. All right, I know the voltage across the load, so I can use that voltage and use the reactive power back, reactive power to tell me what the imaginary part of Z needs to be. And the imaginary part of Z is the part that would come from the capacitor, right? So um, two K bars, I would say Q cap magnitude is equal to what? Well, if I'm putting the capacitor right here, right? So it would be the magnitude of V1 squared divided by whatever the, Z cap is. I should say the imaginary part of that, but I know what do I know about the imaginary part of where the impedance of a capacitor? It's entirely imaginary, right? So if I did the work on this, right, this would be V1 squared, which we said was 4,800 squared, divided by what's the Z of the capacitor? It's one over J omega C. So what's the imaginary part? Now this guy works out to be one over omega C, like that. Now it's ne the imaginary part's really negative, but if you think about it, the reason I would have said this was Q cap itself was negative two, so this would have been negative 2,500. There would have been a negative sign over here, but it's easiest to work on the magnitudes. I will probably only ever ask you unity power factor problems. Um, it could be, that you could say, well, I, I want the power factor to be 0.95, All right? Then you would have to figure out, okay, if I wanted the power factor to be 0.95, how much Q does the capacitor need to add to get the angle closer to zero, but not all the way to zero? That's more work than I'm gonna ask you to do, all right? I just want you to get the basic concept, okay? If I go through, so again, what frequency do I use? Usually 60 Hertz. So I say omega equals two pi 60, plug in the math, and I get that C equals 2.8782 times 10 to the minus seven farads. All right, and I will stop there. I should have stopped a minute earlier.